Descript allows you to create multi-cam workflows with multiple videos and multiple speakers, and you can manipulate each of those videos on your composition to allow switching cameras, changing the speaker view, showing one speaker full screen, showing them side by side, one on top of each other, like in a vertical video, and all of these things you can do now in Descript. And I will show you in this session how to achieve that. I have a recording of a small interview that I did with Chris, my friend Chris Menard. It's a test recording that we made via Riverside, and we recorded separately our audio and our video. So I've got here four files, uh, one audio for myself and uh, one video, and again, the same for Chris and one video and on audio. So how can I combine these in Descript, synchronize them so they play at the same time, and that you know, transcribe them, allow me to switch the speaker and so on with the multi-cam feature. Well, let's have a look at how to do this. I have created a blank project in here and I just gave it a name, two videos, two speakers. And in my media bin at the top, I already imported these files and I transcribed them. You see, every file is transcribed because it shows this quote symbol next to it. So now I want to combine these files into a sequence first. So the reason I have audio as well is because maybe your audio may be better quality than the audio that goes on the video file. So you may record your video through Riverside or whatever, but the audio may not be as good. So you're recording your audio separately, uh, locally maybe, or whatever. So you've got, you've got audio files too. But for this tutorial, I'm actually going to just use the video and the video for myself and Chris. And it's really important. If you want to have Descript, automatically swap cameras when the speaker is speaking. So if I'm speaking, it should show my camera. And when Chris is speaking, shows his camera. At the moment, at the time of recording this session, there is no way to switch camera when the audio is a separate track. Okay, so that's very important distinction there. So what I want to do is I want to create a sequence and I want to put the two video files in. I'm not going to worry about the other two audio files at the moment. So I'm going to click on my video and click on Chris's videos. Technically, you can create a sequence by selecting multiple files at the same time. And look here, Descript is offering to create the sequence for you, but I'm actually going to create my sequence from scratch, just so you can understand exactly what's going on. So at the top where it says add files, click that and it says sequence here. I'm going to create a sequence. And by default, there's a blank sequence there with one track on it. So we need to add those files in here. First of all, we go to the add media at the top. This opens a little reduced version of that media bin. So let's add myself first, click on my video and click add as a new track right there. So that's going to insert that video to this sequence. Boom. And then it shows my video. I can uh, create a blank track. I guess, you know, there was a track before there. It didn't use that one. So let's add Chris's video as well. Go again to the add media dialog, click on Chris's video here and add his new track as well. If the files are starting at the same time, you should see them at the bottom here, all synchronized from the beginning of the track. Okay. If you have a recording where the video is not synchronized to the other person, you may have to just click and move these files and synchronize them like this you know, make sure they start at the right time. And if you also have audio, you can use the audio to synchronize both tracks by just aligning the waveforms. I'm not going to add the audio files right now because each video has its own audio in my case, and I need these to be identified speakers so that Descript knows when and who is talking. So that's very important. You don't have to do that, by the way. You don't have to have the automatic switching. But if you want to have that, you absolutely have to have the audio belonging to the video track, because then that's how it knows which video to show. OK, so before I move on, I would like to rename these tracks just to keep things organized. I'm going to click on here and call this one Christy. And the other one, I'm going to call it Chris. Yeah, that's Chris's name. So both tracks. I am done here, really, I'm done here. Click done and there we go. Now go back to the media bin and find that sequence. There it is, it's right there. If you don't see it, you can open the sequences folder, which um, Descript creates by default. 
I would like to rename this sequence, by the way, right click on it, rename and say both speakers. Just again, you know, keeping things tidy so you know what's happening, you know what's showing up everywhere. So with that sequence, now I need to take it and put it in my composition. So this is the hierarchy. Files into sequences, sequences into compositions. That's how it goes. So let's see, click and drag. You can drag this and it says add to script. Don't do add to scene. If you have a scene already or something, don't do add to scene because that's going to just cut it off to five seconds by default. So don't do that. Just click add to script or drag it. Boom. There you go. Now you see the text because, as I said before, I transcribed these files. So my audio, Chris's audio, and also I identified the speakers before. I'm not showing this in this session where I have, you know, Chris and Christy showing uh, throughout as we speak. I'm done with the media bin. I can close this and look at this. Both videos are shown side by side by default because Descript realized that my underlying sequence has two tracks with two videos and it automatically conveniently shows them here. But look, I can grab each one of them and manipulate it separately. That's what layers do. If you click outside of the video area for a second, just to deselect everything, you will see that on the sidebar, we have the layers section. And that actually shows me the names of the tracks that I provided in that sequence, Christy and Chris. And by clicking this, it will take you to that place. Look, Chris, click on this. And I have the properties of that particular layer now to manipulate in here. So some things you can do, for example, if you want to arrange them uh, differently, you can crop each layer individually, double click on it to go into crop mode. And let's say maybe I want to crop to sort of like a square for each of us. And then Chris again, double click on it and just make it square like that, maybe almost square. Okay, so there you go. I have cropped each layer. I can still move them around. I can resize them like this. So, you know, this is like a Zoom meeting on steroids. Okay, so I've got both of them here like that. Maybe Chris needs to be a little more cropped and mine as well. Double click, double click. That enters and exits crop mode. Two videos, right? That, that was very easy. So now they're both playing at the same time and we're having this conversation. There we go. Chris, welcome to the show, to my fake podcast episode. So this is how you have both speakers showing there. Now, how do I manipulate the different scenes? Okay. The, the clue is in the name, really. If I want to show for a portion of it, like we show side by side, but at some point we say, let's switch to maybe one of the speakers being full screen for a while. I'm going to go and create a scene right there where it says, this is my, where I'm speaking, Christy, click this slash symbol here to create a new scene, or you can press the slash symbol on your keyboard and I created a new scene. And in this one, this is my first test of Riverside. Apparently I'm speaking here because it says the, the speaker label. I'm speaking in here and I want to put my video full screen in this scene. So double click on my video. And I, I can, you know, resize it, expand it so that I can see my whole video like this. You only need to do this once, by the way. Here we go. And that's it. So my video is now full screen. Chris's video is behind mine. I don't see it. So watch this. Right here before this scene, it's both of us side by side. If I click to play now. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great. This is my first. You can see the video changing automatically to me. And if I go to Chris again, right there, this is where Chris starts talking. Press slash again. I can now take my video and move it to the back and take Chris's video and double click to remove the cropping. You, by the way, you should be able to remove the cropping by uh, reset crop like this. So that's easy to go back to the original version of the video. And I'm going to make Chris full screen like that. And watch this. When I'm finishing to speak right there. Okay. Well, then I do see it changes to Chris. Now, all of this was done manually by switching cameras myself. How about having the cameras switch automatically depending on who's talking? That is easy. Let's create a new composition from this. I don't want to mess this one up. So I'm going to go back to compositions on the top left. This is the top left uh, composition drawers. 
I'm going to create plus to create a new composition. And let's give this one a name auto camera switching. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to close that. So I'm going to bring in the same sequence. Okay. So that's very nice. The, the flexibility of assembling one sequence, and then you can reuse that in many scenarios, many compositions, including vertical video, horizontal video. You can do whatever with that sequence that has both speakers on. I'm going to just drag that again here, add to script. The same conversation is in here and you can see both of our videos showing. So here's a cool one. I'm going to make both of our views large. I'm going to make this one large. And when I click on this, it says swap layer on the multicam section on the sidebar. And I want to say active speaker. And when I do this, watch this on the sidebar. You see all of the scenes. Descript has created scenes automatically for every speaker change. So that means that when I'm speaking, you see my thumbnail. When Chris is speaking, you see his thumbnail because Descript is actually changing this automatically as we speak. So let's watch this. This is where Chris is speaking. This is what I'm speaking. Again, me, again, Chris. So that was effortless. Now, the only way this works is if, as I said, the video of each person has the audio of that person as well, because it knows when the audio plays, oh, that's the video that should be showing. That's the only way it does. I have reported this to Descript and I have asked, would it be possible to use a secondary audio file maybe the higher quality file that I'm transcribing uh, from my local recording uh, studio source, whatever, to switch the video, which would imply that you would have to link a video to an audio file somehow so that Descript knows which video to show for which audio. That's another story. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but right now this is how you do it. So you see, I have just created a sequence with two files transcribed them, identified the speakers, dropped that into a composition and turned on the multi-speaker option for this multi-cam. And it says Christy here because that's what I'm doing, but it's the same asset. If I click on this, it says Chris because the multi-cam has switched the uh, speaker automatically for me and all those scenes are already created now. So I hope this was helpful. This is a good workflow that a lot of people are using, and I'm sure you will need to use this at some point, maybe when you have an interview or a podcast interview, whatever. Uh, this is the way to do it in Descript.